Have you ever wondered what you need to do to create a visual like this one where you have the filling line effect and you have rounded edge of the column? Well, wonder no more because today I'm going to tell you exactly how you can create it and it doesn't involve any SVGs, it doesn't involve any custom visuals that you need to download or pay for, but it only uses a very basic column chart or bar chart if you want. So let's not waste any time and head over to Power BI Desktop. So we start from this rather basic chart. Yeah, it shows the sales for any given year for each of our sales managers. There are two things missing. First of them is that gray line that we need to fill. The one that goes from the top of the sales all the way to the top of the visual. For that, you need to have a measure that calculates the maximum sales for any manager for any year. The measure would look like this. First of all, I calculate a table that contains the area manager, the year, and the yearly sales. And from this, I calculate the maximum value. This should be enough in theory, but you still need to wrap that one in a calculate function and we will remove any filters that come for year or for the area manager and we multiply it by 1.1 which will add the 10% to the maximum value so that we always will have a gap between the highest sales and the top of the visual. You would say why do we need to remove filters? Well let me quickly show it to you. Let me show it here on the final visual. Now let's open this measure and let's remove the filter for year, for example. If we change it, we see so far no changes. But if we change the year, you see the maximum value changes based on the maximum value for that year. So regardless what you have in your maximum function, this slicer right here will filter your result. Let's get back to the measure. Let's put it back on and let's see what happens if we remove the area manager, for example. So let's remove this. Well, hold on a second. Let's grab the comma as well. Let's remove it. And see, all the lines are going to the highest sales for the area manager, not for all area managers. So let's get back to the measure and let's put this filter back on. And this is how it should look like. Now, let me help you build this exact visual. Let's go back here. First of all, we need to add the second measure to the visual, the max value. And now that we've added this, we need to change the order of these two measures. So let's go to build pane and put the max value first. Why? You'll see in a second. Let's go to the format pane. Let's go to columns first. And if we go to layout, you see we can now overlap them. So if we turn this on, nothing happens. What do we need to do? Well, space between series needs to be 0%. Now see, if we look at the sales color, you see is the dark blue. If we look at the max value, we see is the light blue. This is why we switch the measures between them, because the measure that sits the lowest is the measure that it's shown in front. And we needed the sales to be the one in front. Now let's change a bit the colors. For the max value, we will go, let's say, with a very light gray. And for the sales, let's go with this nice purple. I guess it's purple. Now, so far so good, we've added this. Let's remove the legend as we don't need it. And this technically shows us what we want to see, but it doesn't do the whole trick. See, you don't have that rounded edge on this sales measure. Even if you go on a different year, nothing happens. So it looks good, but it can be better. So this technically is the second thing that we need to make sure it's working. Well, in order to change that, we need to think a bit creatively. What can we use that has a rounded edge to it? Well, technically, a marker. But 
we only have markers in line charts, not in column charts or bar charts. Except, we actually have them in the column charts and bar charts as well, just not for the regular columns. We do have them for the arrow bars. So, let me show you how to set them up. First of all, let's go to arrow bars, let's select sales, let's enable them, and now we have two things that we need to worry about, the upper bound and the lower bound. The upper bound, obviously, is the sales measure. So, let's select it from our measures, sales current year, and you see already we have this line right here that indicates that's the value of the sales. And for the lower bound, we want to go all the way down to zero, all the way to the bottom of the visual. So, what did I do to create that? A very simple measure called dummy, which equals to zero. Now, let's go back to the formatting pane. Let's go to the euro bars. And lower bound, we will use the dummy measure. Let's select it. Perfect. You see now we have this line over here. You might say, well, it's just a line with the line end, nothing fancy. Take around and we'll make it look just like the other one. Now, let's repeat the process for the maximum value, just for the fun of it. So, let's put the upper bound, let's go to key measures, is in KPI, is the max value. The lower bound, for the lower bound, we have two options. We could use a measure that returns the difference between the maximum value and the sales, or we can use the dummy measure. I'll use the dummy measure because it gives us a bit more options, and I'll show you at the end, once we finish setting this up, what are the options we have if we use the dummy measure here as well. So, let's select the dummy measure as a lower bound. Perfect, and now let's enable it. Once we enable it, we see it's behind it. What we don't want to see now is the actual columns, because the actual columns will hide all the nice effect that we want to create. So, we need to go to columns, we apply the settings to all, and we set the transparency to 100%, so we can only see the error bars now. Now, let's go to our error bars and make them look exactly like I've shown you before. In the error bars for the max value series, we need to make sure that the color matches the series color. We need to make sure that the border size is zero, and then we can increase the width all the way to 10. Perfect, we have the gray space behind. Now, let's repeat the settings for sales. First of all, match the series color. Second of all, let's make the width 10 and the border size is zero. Perfect, but you still don't have that rounded end. Very easy to fix. We go to markers, we choose the shape as the round circle, and we increase the size ever so slightly so it fits on the width of the bar. It won't fit 100%, but from a distance, it looks very good. Now you see, you will have this rounded effect, and you will have the fill effect for any year, for any bar chart. Perfect so far. Now this is how easy it is to set it up. Bada bim bada boom, use the error bars, a couple of settings here and there, nothing fancy, and you're done. You've created something that looks like a modern app. But you remember I said earlier, if we use the dummy measure for the max value as well, we have a few more options for setting this up. So let me show you what you can do. If we go to the error bars, with the cells selected, let's turn the width of the bar a bit down. Let's say size 4. And then let's make the marker ever so slightly smaller so it fits our bar. Let's say something like this. See, now if you look around, we have this edge around our measure, which kind of shows the sales in the middle of the maximum value, creating another layer of effect saying, oh, we are going up or down. This is something that you can do as well with this visual.
But hey, this is not the only fancy visual that you can put on your dashboard. You can also use this slicer and I have created for it SVG buttons. And if you want to know how to build them, watch this video right here. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe even become a member and get access to all of the PBIX files and see all the videos first. This is Talion signing off. Until next time. Cheerio!